Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama. It's the store that has everything for creatives like you and me. Well, in this episode, we're gonna talk about tripods and specifically, what's the difference between a tripod for shooting video like this one right here and a tripod for shooting stills like this right here. They might look very similar, but they're not. They have some things in common, basically from the, the tripod head down, but from the tripod up, things change. And so what we're first going to do is just look at a normal tripod. I've got a couple of tripods over here. We're gonna take a look at the legs and the feet and the heads and the weight ratios and all that kind of stuff. And once we know that, then we're gonna start comparing a still tripod to a video tripod. So let's get started. Let's begin by just talking about tripods in general, not video or still tripods, just tripods. And so each tripod is going to have a set of legs that are a specific height, a certain number of segments, and then also a weight rating. So it will, when you're looking at a tripod, it will say you have a three or four segment uh, base, and it will hold up to six pounds or eight pounds or four pounds or whatever that is. And then it will also specify the material that's used. This one is carbon fiber, this one is aluminum, and so that will determine the price, also how light it is, and then how much weight it can support. And so you wanna get the base of your tripod, you wanna choose that based on how large your camera is. So this is a very lightweight Sony a7 III. I don't really need a beefy tripod or base. It's gonna be just fine. So once you have the base, the other thing that you'll probably wanna know about on the bases are just a few features. So one of the things that you'll wanna know about are the, the legs and how the, uh, the feet on the legs are different. So on these two tripods, we have feet, if we look closely, that are just normal rubber feet. That's good for hardwood floors and indoor shooting. You can unscrew these and take them out and replace them with spikes, which are great for places that have uh, rocky ledges or outside mud, things like that. And so uh, you can determine that. Some tripods, like this guy right here, they have feet that allow you to um, just sort of screw in the base and so you get the rubber feet or the spiky feet. And so you can get either version in almost every tripod tripod brand allows you to choose that. And then the other thing is um, how far out the legs can go horizontally. And so by default, if my little um, support here is clicked in, I'm gonna be limited to something like this. If I click this out, I can go out and it will stop something like that, or I can stop something like that and lock into place. And that is great if you're shooting out in the woods, out in the wilderness, and you're up against the wall, and you need to brace your tripod on something, so let's pretend this is a wall, I could brace my tripod, something like that, and so it works really great. Sometimes it's referred to as a Rocky Mountain leg, and so that's what that is, and not all tripods have that. And so if you're an outdoor photographer, you really wanna make sure that you've got that feature, because it'll make a big difference on how you can level out your tripod. This tripod, for example, has, well, straight out, and a little bit and that. Yeah, so this one has it too. So it's pretty cool. Okay, let's talk about tripod heads. And this is where we get into a big difference between tripods and still tripods and video tripods. Now I by no means have all the different tripod heads you can get out here. So I've got some ball heads, these two guys right here. And I've got a three-way head, which is this guy right here. But there are also gimbal heads and all kinds of other heads that I don't have. Um, so depending if you're a bird photographer, probably none of these tripod heads would work. You'd need a big uh, gimbal head. Um, but if you're still a life photographer, a three-way head is probably going to be better than a ball head, etc. So let's look and see what a ball head does. It's my favorite and it's what I use almost all the time. So this is a very, very lightweight, small ball head and it allows you to position the camera however you want, lock it into place, and then you can take the photo. It's very easy to use. It does have a little notch here on the front. And what that allows you to do is then you can go lower and get some straight down shots. So if you don't have the notch, you're sort of limited. So that is pretty common on all ball heads. And the other thing you might have is a ratcheting side uh, lock. And so depending on how you have the head or whatever, you might need to be able to tighten that or loosen it. And there's something in the way so you can ratchet that open and move that. So that ratchet is pretty good. One of the other things that is really important on any tripod, no matter which one you get, is a locking mechanism on the head and the plate. 
So the plate is the thing that mounts to the bottom of your camera. This is an Arca plate. It's pretty standard across um, uh, many, many tripods. There's lots of accessories that are called Arca style accessories, so L brackets and tether tools, uh, tether blocks, things like that. And so if you want the maximum compa compatibility with your tripod, get an Arca type head. So this plate, when I put it on my tripod and lock it down, there's a little click that happens when I do that. And what that does is it locks the camera in place. So if I loosen this and I try to take it off, I can't take it off. So that will keep me from unintentionally taking my camera off my tripod. If you don't have a lock, you can drop your camera. It's a very expensive. So on this, once it's locked in, I have to pull on this, twist it a little bit more and take it off. So you have to be sort of intentional about that. Now this is a lot more obvious that you can get in trouble with a uh, plate like this guy right here. This is a Manfrotto plate, also very popular. And on these guys, you have just a little hook that you uh, pull and that comes right off. And so what can happen is if you don't lock this, you can have your camera on here, you can unintentionally unlock that, Whew, your camera falls and comes crashing to the ground. And so over the course of many years, I've taught thousands of students and probably once a month or so, I hear a story of somebody who has a, in an inexpensive tripod with no lock, who's at a wedding or some event and they accidentally take their camera off their tripod, it comes crashing to the ground, breaks the lens or camera and they can't shoot the wedding or event they're hired to do. So for this guy, once this clicks into place, there's a little, uh, a little guy right here that you click over and now that's not gonna open. So make sure you get a locking mechanism. This is a three-way head. The advantage of this is you can adjust uh, side to side like this. You can do up and down, and then you have a pan feature. And so it's great. And a lot of people think this is good for video, but it's not. You need a video tripod. Why is that? Well, it really has to do with the pan and resistance that you get when you're moving a camera around. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about some uneven surfaces and how you use your legs to balance out the camera and why you then need a video head to make everything level. Okay, let's get down to brass tacks uh, when it comes to filming video with a still tripod versus a dedicated video tripod. And you know, this really matters if you're in a situation like this. You're on location, you're somewhere where you have an uneven surface what you need if you're gonna be moving your video camera around is to have the head level. Now I know what you're thinking, you're like, Mark, this is a, uh, it's got a pan head. You can level it out by, first you can level it, let's do the obviously wrong thing, just level the, the ball head. And so if you're just shooting and not moving the camera, that will work. But as soon as you want to pan, of course, you no longer have a level pan. And so this is sort of an exaggerated example of what will happen even if you use the legs and you use your little bubble level on top of the cam uh, tripod and you get this in pretty level position so something ish like this so i'm going to do my best to get this level one of the things is to get it exactly level um, you can't so i could use the ball head or the level on here to make sure it's all level but that assumes that the head the ball head is exactly positioned on the head so what you'll get is you'll get a pretty close to level uh, position, but, and this is exaggerated a little bit, but as you start to pan, it's just not gonna be level. So that's one of the issues. The other issue is that uh, when you're uh, moving the camera in video, left to right, up to down, you wanna try to uh, restrict that movement to just up and down, just left and right. You don't want any yaw back and forth like this. And so a ball head isn't gonna really work for that. And so what you're thinking is, well, why don't you just use a three-way head? So Matt's got a three-way head right over here. So I'm gonna give you this. And this could work. We could level this out. And now we've got a three-way head and I sort of make this as level as possible. So this would be a better choice for video because if once you get this level, you can move it up and down and left and right independent of each other. But it is difficult to move this in a nice, smooth, and efficient way. What you want is a head that is built for movement, and so you can adjust the tension to say, give me some resistance, make it really smooth, don't give me any resistance, or even on nicer video heads, you can sort of ease in 
and move and ease out. So they will move the camera along in a very specific way. And so let's talk about that in addition to leveling out the camera. So I'm gonna give Matt this tripod. If it falls, who cares? And we're gonna bring out the entire rig here. And uh, this is Matt, you probably remember him from years ago. Um, we're back in Arizona, the team is reunited. So I can take this uh, tripod here. This is a me video tripod for travel. And I have used this all over the world. I absolutely love this tripod. It's carbon fiber, it's lightweight, it is very compact. So what I'm gonna do here, so I'm gonna get this in an obviously not level position, okay? So the great thing about a video tripod is on the bottom of the tripod, there's something called a bowl. And what the bowl allows you to do is to use a level. It's got a level right here. And now I can lock that in and it doesn't matter if the legs are level or not because everything from here up is exactly level. And now I can loosen this and my pan is absolutely level and my tilt is absolutely level. And also I have an adjustment here to tell the camera how I want to have resistance, lots of resistance or just a little bit of resistance. The same is true of the left and right. So I've got nice smooth motion. So if I wanted to film that jet flying over, I would have a good motion for that. So we'll let that go. The other difference, ah, I love filming outside. The other difference between a video tripod and a still tripod is the balance. And so ideally, when you loosen your, your tilt head, you wanna be able to let go with your hands and let this be balanced as much as possible. And the way you do that is on these big guys like this, I'm gonna open this up. You'll see that this is a long uh, plate. It's a very long plate. And what that does is when you slide this on here, you can slide it forward or backwards. This does lock by the way, so it's locked in right now. And so depending on the weight of your camera, you can slide it back. So it will be, if it's front heavy, you can slide it back. If it's front heavy like this one, I can slide it forward and that will keep everything nice and balanced. And you can see it's not locked, but it is balanced. Pretty cool. And so that is why you want a video head. It's for the leveling capabilities, it's for the balancing capabilities, for the weight capabilities, and the resistance capabilities to make sure that you get a nice, even, I guess I have to lock that down, a nice, even shot. And so we're here at a, a little lake, and I can see over here there's a bird of some sort. And so if I turn my camera on and I'm filming this, you can see that as I'm moving my camera, I'm gonna wait for a second here. There's some other birds on the other side. You can see that I'm getting a nice, even, smooth shot. And that's something that if I tried with a ball head, it just wouldn't work. That's all you need to know about tripods. Well, I hope this was educational and you learned a thing or two about the differences between a video tripod and a still tripod and a beefy head and a smaller head and a three-way head and all the joys that go along with choosing a tripod that is right for you. Thanks so much for joining me on this episode of Exploring Photography. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell so you don't miss a single episode. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.